I heard the piss pop. You're a true soul, same as near. So like I said, piss off. <laughs> Fuller was mad as a rutting badger, but she weren't a friend of any true soul. What about piss off, do you? Hold on. You aren't just talking shit, are you? Then shh. Keep it low. Don't let them hear you. Now, why in the hottest hells would a true soul be helping me? Fine. Let's say I believe you. You want to kill these peckers? I'm not complaining. But you better finish the job, because I'll be the one to suffer if you don't. <clears throat> Ain't you hearing me, prickhole? Piss off to every last hell! Shove off. Just because you off near doesn't mean I'm sharing. As if you could handle it. Slow spout will drop a poon like you in a blink. Now clear out! Your yeah, face is bugging me. You drug needle worm! Fuck yes. up. Shit! You did it! What now? Really? Drug, yes! Glory to Iron Hand! Won't be needing this poison, now that you've off the pricks. Bet you'll find it handy, though. You're a good one. I won't forget it.
<laughs> Who there, wanderer? Stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Elminster? The very same, Gale. And a fair bit miffed he is, too. Finding himself forced to expose his best pair of boots to so many miles of country road on your behalf. Meet Elminster Ormar, a good friend of mine, but rather more significantly, he's the most famed and respected wizard in the realms. Am I, indeed? Most famed and respected errand boy, more like. I was bid to spare neither time nor my own self to find you. She sent me, Gale. You know of whom I speak. But why? Out with it, Elminster. Please. Young man, has your sojourn away from Waterdeep washed away your decorum as well as your patience? Nigh a ten day I've gone without honest fare, worthy of the name, drank naught, but what the sky entitled my thirst. Why, some bread, cheese, and a cup of wine would appear unto me a feast. Surely you won't begrudge me a mite of rest and repast before I get, get out with it? And a great kindness that would be. See, Gail, even in these barren parts, the art of hospitality begets inspired new works. If only one keeps up the practice. Oh, for the love of... Uh, this way, then. Hmm. To your camp. Oh, don't dawdle now, lad. You're the one who's in such a frightful hurry. Oh, nigh on 13 centuries old and he still thinks with his stomach. We'd best follow and see if he's more disposed to speak plainly once it's stopped its grumbling. Wise choice. Better to indulge your curiosity than Elminster's appetite. Mmm! Yes, what a delightful wedge of old as Turin that was. Doesn't do to parlay on an empty stomach, you know. Makes one's words frivolous when they should be grave. Plenty to digest, after all. A good deal to stew over, if you will. Words ladled with import should be savored so as to better absorb their meaning. Wouldn't you agree? Alminster. Uh, right. Um... You see... I... Um... Well, that is to say... Gale, my boy, I've come to address a most pressing matter. I'll speak as plainly as I can, forswearing the accustomed frills that decorate my speech. I'm here on behalf of Mistra. The message and the charge I bring you are hers. Oh, Mistra's delicate feet are ill-suited for the hardships of the road. You know where you went wrong, Gale. No, we needn't dwell on that here and now. But even so, you're to be given a chance of redemption. Mistra would consider... forgiveness? She would consider... what she considers to be forgiveness. Mistra is aware of the misadventures that have befallen you both. She knows of your strife with the Absolute, that most insidious of evils. Alas, 
the creature that afflicts you, the ill-begotten magic that it weaves is inextricably conjoined with both the greater purpose and the greater master that it serves. You must know that the absolute is more dangerous than you can possibly conceive. It threatens all who live, even those who are undying. It threatens the gods, the weave, the very fabric of the universe itself. That is why I have come here to charge you, Gale, with its destruction. It is Mistress' belief that only you can. The orb. Precisely. Mistra has granted me the power to stop the clock, as it were, on the orb's rush to overpower you. Instead, you will be able to unleash its lethal combustion at will. Interesting. This could be help or hindrance. We shall have to see. You must find the heart of the Absolute, whatever that may be, and use yourself as the uh, catalyst that will burn it from this world. He is not. But it seems that Mistra is. It brings me no pleasure saying this, my friend. But such is Mistra's will. Yours must be the sacrifice that will undo the Absolute. And for your sacrifice, you will be redeemed. Such is Mistra's promise. With that, I've said my sorry piece. I need only bestow unto thee the charm I was bid. My nahastra mistrarium italion thras annas It is done. Both charge and charm have been committed into your care. To you, I commit into care Gale himself. I count on you to shepherd him well on this strangest of journeys. On my honor, I'm not sure yet I can say the same. Like moons make swell and wane the nescient seas, so too the sky's chosen gods ordain the tidal fates of mortal days. And yet, a notion born in lonely hours, come ebb, come flow, come all that is beyond the breadth of our dominion, be a moon unto yourself. Even the waves of fate can break upon the shores of will. Farewell, my friend. Farewell, Elminster. I'm glad she chose you. A bell. But all right. Must have had something important to say to Gail if he came all this way. Good news, I hope. <laughs> Whoa, now, he's got a. Well, I guess that would explain a little, but. Mistra. 
I mean, this is a lot to take in. What's he going to do? Tell him to pick the right one. Well, better yet, I'll do it. <sighs> Fucking wizards, man. They always need help picking the simple, obvious option. If Mistra can't think of another way to stop the Absolute than sacrificing Gale, she's no god worth worshipping. I'll say that to Gale in, you know, gentle terms. We were both part of Zariel's inner circle. Her by choice, me by force. In the grand scheme of things, I'm inconsequential to Zariel. Sure, I've got the engine, but I wasn't even her strongest fighter. But she favored me like a child favors a captive pet. Mizora envied the attention, I suppose. I'm sure when Zariel gave her the order to hunt me down, Mizora was delighted. I don't know. You'd think she'd have more important things to do. Devils and their pride. <sighs> no kidding. The fighting, the chaos, the betrayal. <laughs> it had the makings of a good stage show, but I did not want to be one of the players. with Elminster is never less than memorable. I'd have hoped to introduce you to him in less dire circumstances. But those are hard to come by these days. Doddering act is merely an illusion, one he's most adept at maintaining. Elminster is the most formidable wizard in the realms, perhaps in existence. For Mistra to have sent him, the severity of her bidding could not be clearer or weigh more heavily on me. Time seems so infinite when you're young. A month is an age, a year is a lifetime. It is a strange feeling to realize how little of it one might have left. Of course, we offer the clearest solution to our problem. All I have to do is find the right place and time, close my eyes, and let go. Then the slate will be clean. Wrongs will be righted, the absolute will be gone, and I along with it. I've no doubt she has the power to do so, but as for the permission, Ao would not look kindly on her meddling in mortal affairs. Divine intervention has a tendency to make things worse, not better. As for Elminster, he saved the realms more times than legend can recount. But to take on a god is no easy feat, even for him. My orb is the best chance we have. And only I can wield it. If there was, I'm sure the goddess of magic and the greatest wizard who ever lived would have identified it. But alas, only one solution is offered. That remains ahead of us for now. The heart of the Absolute must be discovered before I can stop its beating. Then I suppose there is nothing more to be done but find the heart of the Absolute and stop its beating.
Stand by me if you need to keep warm in this awful place. I've never seen darkness like this before. It's unsettling. Alas, it's the only path to Moonrise Towers. We have to push into the dark. This is heavy. Stay together. Keep to the light. Attack or not depends entirely on you, love. Come into the light. Hands high! Jonas! Move in! Get hold of you. Harpers, now!
eat it. Now we've got to move. I know a safe place. Give me your map. Keep your torch high. If you step into the shadows, you'll be felled in a heartbeat. That's right. Protected by magic. Only spot in the region that's not been swallowed up by this damn curse. Light will save you here on the outskirts, but a few paces deeper, you're screwed. If you want to catch your breath, the inn's the only place to do it. Hope to see you there. Harpers, move out! He had dreams of boarding a ship in Baldur's Gate and seeing the world. But then the darkness came. In her former life, this girl played in the nearby woods. She was always the best at climbing trees. 
You sense a young woman gazing at Moonrise Towers in awe. Perhaps one day she will get to gaze out from atop it, she hopes. The image of an orange-haired cat asleep before a fireplace comes to you. What came of it? Consumed by the shadows. Poor fella. This place is protected. Must be the refuge the Harpers spoke of. Must be keeping it at bay. You there! Step forward and keep your hands off your weapons. Easy! He's with me. Jahira! Hello. Absolutely. This is why we're here, you see. It is a curious creature that hides all manner of secrets. But if there's one thing that we know... ...it's that it knows its own kind. You should never have come here, true soul. who protected the Emerald Grove. Yup. Didn't leave a goblin standing. Not so bad to hang around with either. Saved one of my friends from a druid with a snake. Knows when to be discreet, too. I pretty much trust him with my life. A true soul with a mind of his own? How is that possible?
in the hells is that thing? Hmm. More or less. Congratulations. You've earned yourself the benefit of the doubt. Hear me, Harpers. All clear. At ease. I'll not pretend to understand what that artifact is. But I'm old and wise enough to recognize a sliver of hope when it crawls out of the dark. Tell me... Why have you come here? Then our interests align. We must all cure ourselves... ...of the entire cult of the Absolute. There's food in the inn over there. Beds, too, if you require rest. Elo oil in the cupboard, in case the vines gave you a rash. Settle in. Then come join me for a drink. You may just be the godsend we've been praying for. Damn it. Oh, knocking around here, right? Should just about do. Just about. We shouldn't hang around too long, though. sensed an infernal what are you doing here same thing as you i reckon trying to stay out of the shadows hold on i know you the weaponsmith right drafted into the blood war when your city was swallowed by avernus not too different from my own story well done making it out alive same to you though unless my senses deceive me you brought a bit of the hells back with you Infernal engine? Who needs a heart when you've got one of these to keep you warm? Thank you, Zariel. Forget warm. You're burning up. Might be burning out a piston ring. Or leaking oil. Mind if I take a listen? Please do. I've been dying to find an infernal mechanic. Now that's hot. Too hot. I think I could sort you out. But I need some infernal iron and a lot of luck. Hey, soldier. We've got some infernal iron already. Let's give it to him, eh? Please let this work. Mmm. The weight of it. And that blaze of chaos. I can't imagine this where my heart should be. Must be quite the experience. Give me just a moment. I don't think there are thick enough gloves in all the realms to protect from that kind of heat. That feels... Good. I'm still burning hot as hell's hole, but I feel less... Changeable. Cheers, mate. Pleasure. And as for the heat, I haven't got any solutions now, but I'm not giving up. Could be if the combustion chamber had its own insulation, or if we had some kind of enchanted coolant. Let me sleep on it. I just might be able to work something out. Hopefully the next time I see you, I'll have something promising to report. I'll need more infernal iron either way, though, so keep your eyes open. Take care. You? What are the odds? 
so glad you're all right. Well, as all right as any of us. A makeshift Harper's fire might not be where I hope to set up shop. But maybe I've got something you can use anyway. And if you find any interesting materials in need of working, I'm happy to help. I hesitated to mention this back in the Druid's Grove, for obvious reasons. But no one has earned my trust, if not you. When Elturel was dragged into Avernus, I was drafted into a devil's smithy. It should have been awful. But infernal metal is like a wild horse. Powerful, exuberant. It'll kill you if you lack technique. I can sense some. Smell it almost. Somewhere in the area. Underground, maybe. Out there in the shadows. If you find it, bring it to me. I'll make something incredible. I'll be here if you need anything else. Damon's upgrade didn't cool me down, but it did juice me up. I don't think I've ever felt more powerful. Bring it on.
Don't wander far. We need to talk. Premium trinkets and doodahs! If you have an alternative in mind, please do propose it. There's another bottle of Arabellan Dry back there. Put it on the bar, then piss off and leave me alone. Jahira said we should serve drinks, but that we shouldn't serve drunks. Jahira didn't save your ragged little tail from the cultists. I did. <sighs> oh, it's you. I'd recognize that self-righteous tone anywhere. If you're here to save the day again, you're a little late this time. Oh, sod off! I'm only here because you helped me and my family. I was ready to cut and run back at the grove, but you had other ideas. Carl and Leo are taken in by your crap. You convinced them to play hero. And now they're gone. Dead for all I know. Or in the cult's tower with the others who were taken. They're my responsibility. You go save the world, or your own ass, or whatever it is you do. I'll fix this. Last light's best bargains right here. Please, be welcome. Have a drink. To your very good health. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's an honor, milady. I will gladly drink to your health as well, Garlack. Well over a century old, and yet it hasn't lost a hint of flavor. Still not quite so sure about you, though. People tend to lose more than just flavor when illithids get their hands on them. I speak from experience. There's an air about you. Something alien. Answer me true, and do not lie. The parasite is changing you. Isn't it? And you're certain you will continue to resist? Good. I will take your word for it. And hold you to it, too. I have every reason to be cautious. I've traced people like you. People with parasites in their brains. All the way here from Baldur's Gate. The cult of the Absolute is spreading through the city. Quietly, quickly, and with unsettling deliberation. We tracked them to this ancient village, only to be faced with a man we killed and buried over a century ago. General Gadric Thorm. Remember that name. He's the leader of the Absolutists. He was a Sharan once. Took to building an army of dark justiciers beneath this very village. Alongside the local druids, we made it our business to see him deposed, dead and buried. But he's returned. Not only does General Ketherick Thorn live again, it seems he is no longer mortal. He has become, in fact, invincible. We met him on the road here. 
commanding an army of the Absolute, intent on destroying Baldur's Gate. I put an arrow through his eye myself, only to watch him pluck it out like a splinter. He healed right in front of me and chased us into the shadows. Things looked hopeless, but experience has taught me that no matter how bleak things look, there's always hope. You are that hope. Protected by your artifact, you can infiltrate his forces at Moonrise Towers, posing as a true soul. Find out what it is that makes him invincible, so we can strip him of his advantage. Once Gatherick is without his shield, the sword, together we assault his tower and put a final end to this blight. Without a cure for your infection, your days are numbered too. Yet you selflessly offer to spend them fighting alongside us. I like you. I promise I will do everything I can to make sure you survive this. Any cure starts with understanding the disease. Whatever magic Gatherick's using to control these tadpoles, it must be at Moonrise. You're not our only secret weapon. Isabel, a faithful cleric of Seluna, and a light in the darkness. She cast the moon shield around the inn. It's the only reason we're still alive. She's upstairs in her chambers. Tell her I sent you, and she'll see you through the shadows safely. Don't be shy! Have a gander at the finest stop. I didn't realize I had an audience. The true soul who's going to save us all. I'm Isabel. Pleased to meet you. Myself and Our Lady are doing what we can to hold the line. I hear you and your tadpole will be our offense. Free from the Absolute's influence, yet able to walk among cultists. It's almost too good to be true. But I'd be a poor cleric indeed not to avail of a blessing when I see one. Let me guess. Jahir has sent you to beg a protection spell of her favorite cleric. Perfect. It'll make you immune to the lesser effects of the Shadow Curse, which will get you closer to the towers. But there are places it won't help. Places where the curse is darker, stronger. The cultists are able to traverse even the deepest shadows, though. I don't know how. The Harpers are trying to figure it out. 
Good luck. And may the Moon Maiden protect you. While you're busy in the towers, I'll be sure to... Wait. Do you hear that? Something's wrong. You can be too. Come with me, and you can hear all about it from Ketherick himself. True soul, my instructions are clear. Take the girl to Ketherick, alive. into your mind's eye, its instructions vivid in your mind. Nothing is more important than bringing the girl alive. What's going on? If you have something to say, say it. Pathetic. The Absolute sees all. Your treachery will be punished. The Absolute? Of course. You can't believe them, Marcus. Ketherick will never give you whatever it is you've been promised. He already has. Time to go, Isabel. Excellent fertilizer. <laughs> will be paid now.
Please, Mistra. Isabel! No! What in the nine hells happened? God spare us! Catherick was planning our demise all along. Listen closely, for there's very little time. Even if last light falls, your mission does not change. You must find Catherick Thorm. And you must kill him. As impossible as that task sounds, there must be a way to break the spell that makes him invincible. There are secrets in this ancient waste hidden from... But hark. Something stirs. be taken by the shadows. Only by the grace of Isabel's spell will we be spared the same fate. We cannot hesitate. Not even for those we knew. Those we cared for. They're no longer who they were. Still your hearts, and steady your hands. To battle! 